to fight past this block of being able to complete the square uh, when we do that today. And you've seen me do a couple of them already, but I'll, I'll make it a little bit more formal today. So what we're talking about today, and this is in section 2.5, um, we're talking about uh, translations and transformations of functions. So what I will say is, you remember that, that toy that would turn from a car into a robot? When I'm actually changing the shape of the graph, I'm talking about a trans transformation, right? Transformers, whatever they were. I was making fun of them in the morning class and all the, a couple of students got mad at me. But um, when I actually change the shape of the graph, I'm gonna, I call it a, a transformation. When I just keep the shape and move it somewhere, I call it just a translation. It's like a, 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 the same word in a different language. It's not changing anything, right? It's just moving it over to that other language kind of thing. So uh, uh, what we need to look at first, though, are these things I call mother functions. I like to use mother functions because it sounds like I'm cursing a little bit, but uh, most books will talk about them as parent functions. But of course, we know it's the mother that's the most important there. So mother functions. And then uh, we'll talk about daughter functions, granddaughter functions, etc., things like that. So the mother functions that I want you to see or, or know, have a good uh, grasp of is definitely like y equals x. And, you know, we know most of these, but if you don't know one, you're going to just put it in your calculator and, and double check it. So... Um, so, I, and I'm looking for the point zero, zero and one, one on it, because what I really like to do is, is look for this box. If I can shift that one by one box, I'll be able to shift the function as well. And so most of these mother functions have these two corners on them. And if they don't, I kind of fake it a little bit, right? So um, uh, y equals x squared, I'll call the mother function. Right, and again, 0, 0, 1, 1 are on there. Uh, there's one that's important to related to this one, and of course that is y equals the square root of x, right? And again, one zero zero one one is on that function. And I'm looking for that that one by one box. That's the that's the one I'm really going to manipulate the most. So all sorts of them, of course, I could keep going with the polynomials to x cubed, right? Um, or y equals the cube root of x. But again, all of these are going to have, and all of these we can find the domain of, which means when we talk about a daughter function, we could find the, the domain of that as well. All of these we could find intercepts, so we could find the same from a daughter function, a translated or a transformed function. Um, uh, some more mother functions uh, would be something like uh, absolute value of x. Right, we looked at that one when we talked about piecewise. But of course, again, we're still seeing that one by one box. Um, there's a few others. Y equals one over X or Y equals one over X squared. These I, these I start cheating on this one by one box piece, but I still have to point one one on these. And so I'm still thinking about that kind of box there. And again, if you, uh, you know, don't recognize these quickly. You, you just put them in your calculator, right? Anytime I ask you to, to do one of these transformations or translations, you're going to be putting in uh, the mother function and then maybe the daughter or granddaughter or great-granddaughter function, that type of thing. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, probably two more, but that we won't really get into to, until Chapter 5. 
uh, y equals e to the x and y equals ln of x. These I'm going to cheat even more on this one by one box, but on the, the e to the x I've got I've got a different corner of this thing, and and ln of x I got a different corner as well. So just as a quick example with this box, right? So these are what I would call the mother functions. If you if you see some function that has a square root in it, you're thinking about that general shape of the square root of x function, right? If you see some function that is looks like e raised to some power, again, you're thinking of that general shape of, of the e to the x function. Um, and you'll see the first few types of transformations we do, they're, they're very simple. All right, but it's it's the, the key is that I can I can visualize these all of these functions quickly. Now I call it a mother function uh, because, like, if I look at y equals x squared, that's a mother function, and y equals two uh, uh, x squared minus four x plus one. What's the matter? Hold on, Hold on a second. Class, sorry. What's up? 824, 1124. 1124. 1125. Yeah. Thanks. 824 is too early. Sorry. Just so. Uh, what? What's the? What's the x squared function look like? Well, we know. What's the? What's the other one look like? Uh, it might do something like this, right? But guess what? Guess where they're both going in the long run? And they end up going exactly the same place. When x goes to infinity, both of those functions go to infinity. And so what happens to us is we eventually start looking and acting just like our parents, <laughs> whether it's nature or nurture, right? So so in, in the long run, we become, right, our, our parents. When we're born, we look very different, right? And we certainly talk different and... We, we don't have all their horrible habits yet, but we pick it all up. So in the long run, we become our parents. And this is the same thing that happens with functions. It's quite interesting. So if you know what the, the original, the, the, the main uh, kind of relative is, the mother, then you'll know eventually what the, what the, how the function behaves. Anybody becoming their parent yet? You should. If you think my my jokes are bad, you should have heard my my father's. He's also a math teacher. Well, he's he's he passed about six years ago, and uh, I used to call him Daddy. Now I call him Daddy. <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh at that. That's not funny. I think it's funny. And when my mom dies, my mom's seventy. I think she's seventy four now. I'm gonna wrap her all up in gauze. She'll be mummy. I'll always have my I'll always have my mummy and daddy. Okay, so let's take a look at a function like x squared and a function uh, g of x like two x squared. Well, the magic piece of this box that of this little one by one box. Right, so zero zero one one. There's my x squared function. Notice what the two is multiplying to. The two is on the outside, right? It's two times the original function, right? So this is saying double your y values. So instead of taking that one by one box, now I have a two by one box, and now I know where my new function is, and it's that easy. So it, by using that little box piece, if I can see that I'm multiplying on the outside, I'm multiplying the outside of that one by one box. So I'm multiplying the y values. If I'm multiplying on the inside, what's a little strange is I'm gonna be crushing it. I'm actually gonna be dividing. When I multiply on the inside, I divide. When I multiply on the outside, I, I expand it. 
So, uh, so there's little subtleties like that. And so we're going to look at a bunch of these different types of transformations. So if I can graph the original function, I can always graph any kind of manipulation of it. So we're going to look at four different types of uh, transformations, translations today. So our first one is going to be uh, reflections. So if I have y equals square root of x, and then I look at the uh, daughter uh, y equals the opposite of the square root of x, I can see where is that negative, inside or outside? Outside. Outside. So this is going to affect the, the, the y values. Remember, the insides are inputs, domains. The result is output y value. So since I'm manipulating the outside of the function, I'm saying uh, negate the y's. And so this is a reflection. So all my values that were positive up in the air are now going to be underground. So this is a, a reflection about the x-axis. So reflect about the x-axis. No. So mother function square root of x, right? I like to look at a table for this one. What do I have? Zero, zero, one, 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 right? And then my, I'm making all my y values negative. So this is my Green's function y equals negative square root of x. And of course I can see the table of values there. Uh, 0, 0, 1, negative 1. I can clearly see that the y values are changing but the x values are not changing. Right? Y values are changing. I'm, I'm, I'm multiplying to the outside of the function. I'm affecting the y values and the x values are staying the same. If we have y equals the square root of negative x, clearly the x is on the interior, or the, ne the negative is on the interior. So, uh, and again, I'm, I'm doing a daughter from here, right? So what's going to happen here, square root of negative x, is my, my x values are going to change signs, but my y values are not, right? So I'm moving, I'm moving to this guy here. And so this is clearly a, a, a reflection about the y-axis, right? So looking for that on-off switch, inside or outside, will we'll just flip the curve around, uh, 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 right, reflected about an axis. Uh, I guess we should look at the stretches and compressions. That's the tough one. I don't think any there'll be many homeworks with a stretch or a compression. But that's my next thing I want to look. Stretch and or compression. And I have a little saying I like here. Uh, and that is that um, X's behave adversely, Y's are direct, for now at least, okay? Uh, X, X values behave, I'm sorry, uh, X factors are inverse, Y factors are direct. Meaning, if I say multiply uh, by 5 in the, in the y direction, it means multiply, everything goes up 5 times. But if I say multiply by 2 in the x direction, it actually gets cut in half. So, x's behave inversely. When I'm multiplying by 2, it's, it's actually I'm dividing by 2. 
and if I'm multiplying by 3 in the y's, I'm actually multiplying by 3. Okay. And again, this is coming from this, uh, uh, that 1 by 1 box. I think that's really the easiest way to think of it. So y equals like uh, uh, 2x squared, right? I'll see the original function 1, 1, 0, 0, and then I'll double that box, right? So that, so that multiplying is outside, so I'm going to see, you see how much taller, you see that I, I'm, I'm stretching that one by one box out, right? So when I'm multiplying to the outsides, I'm, I am multi, I am, uh, stretching. Okay? If I'm multiplying on the inside, I'm compressing. So, so meaning if I had, uh, y equals x over 2 quantity squared. Oops, sorry. So this x, x, 2x now is inside, right? That multiple of 2 is inside. And so this one, of course, is 4x squared, right? So now, now you can see there's a relationship between inside and outside. But it's easier for me to look at this with my my box, my original. So here's my mother function x squared. And what I'm going to do is cut my box in half because this guy says compress by 2. So it really means divide by 2. But which, to which variable? To the x variable. So now, now my function is doing this. And guess what? If I expand this out all the way to here, you so you can see my original yellow box here one by one gets crushed in half, right? But if I continue the function up, you can see that the new function is four times higher. Okay, and so it's it's a little bit strange here, but let's let's again look at this mother function x squared, and let's look at a couple of points on there. So zero zero one one two four, right? And look what's happening here. And again, it's saying to you, what should I change? Should I change the inputs or the outputs here? When you're looking at this function that I just drew, what does it say? Change the inputs or the outputs? Inputs. Inputs. It's, it's inside, right? The function is a square function. And I put that two inside. So leave the x's alone. Or I'm sorry, leave the outsides alone. Leave the zero, one, and four alone. But what's happening to the x values here, right? What's happening to the x values here? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to divide them by 2. So 0 divided by 2 is still 0, right? What's 1 divided by 2? Look at that now. Remember what I'm going to do first. I'm going to do 2 times that 1 half. What is 2 times that 1 half? 2 times that 1 half is 1. So I'm getting back to the, the mother function. And then my next input is 2. But multiplying by 2 actually means the inverse. So divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Right? Notice that now when I put that input of 1 in to the inside of my new function, I get 2 times 1, which is 2, and I square it, I get the 4. I get that original 4. So x's behave inversely, y's are direct. When I'm changing something inside, I go the opposite way. Multiply by 2 on the outside means stretch it up by 2 in the y direction. Multiply by 2 on the inside means squash it by 2 in the x direction. Very strange on that. But how are you going to pick up the subtleties here? You're going to graph the functions and their mother functions. You're going to graph the new functions the, 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 and graph the mother functions. You're going to look at the tables. You're going to compare the tables, right? Um, you, you can make sliders on Desmos, and I'm going to do that after I do one more set of transformations here, which are called shifts, horizontal and vertical shifts. And I'm talking just a lot of theory right here. And where, where you're going to pick up that theory is by moving, by graphing things, right? Graphing things, making tables. Almost done. 
So uh, horizontal and vertical shifts. So uh, y equals square root of the x is the mother function. y sub 2 is square root of x plus 3 is a daughter function. Is this 3 inside or outside? Inside. Inside. So it's affecting the x's. But x's, x factors are, are, are inverse, right? So x's behave inversely is what I like to say. So that means I'm actually shifting this mother function to the left, right? So, so here's my square root of x function, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. I'm going to take this whole yellow box and move it 3 to the left. 1, 2, 3. This is where my new box lives. And there's my new function, y equals square root of x plus 3. So x's behave inversely. What are some values on, on, the, on the square root of x table? 0, 0, square root of, sorry, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. Uh, notice that this, this thing is going to be inside, so it's going to affect my x's, but not my y's. Right? So because my, my where I'm changing is on the inside, my outside values stay the same. My inside values should shift by negative 3, inverse. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And so there I get a table for both. Of course, both relating to, right, those three, those three points on the, on the curve, right? Yeah. Did I do something wrong there? Oh, yeah, it's a 1. Sorry. Thank you. So our last one is a vertical shift. So if I have y equals the square root of x and the 3 is on the outside, then I'm just taking the whole curve and moving it up, right? Right, so this is a, a vertical shift. Now, where they start to get really confusing is when I put all of them in together. And we're not going to quite do that. But I'm thinking of this general thing. If y equals f of x is the mother, then the daughter is a times f of b times x minus c all plus d. So a is the first the, uh, the reflection up and down or the stretch or compress in the y direction. B is the switch left or right, or compression or, ex or expansion in the, in the x direction. C is the shift, right, left or right. And D is the shift up or down. So I like to, I like to do this one on Desmos, and I think you should try it as well. So simple, as simple as, as can be, if they just give me a, 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 a function like uh, square root of uh, x minus 3, I should also then graph the mother, y equals square root of x, right? So I should be able to compare the two of those quite easily. So even on my TI-83. And look at them in the long run. Do you see how the daughter starts to look like the mother? Right? So, um, so if I just give you some function with a translation on it, just graph that, that and you should be able to recognize the mother function pretty easily. Right? 
but of course the more interesting thing is just to take the mother and then build this oh, where's my mouse damn it where's my mouse there it is I want to take this thing and build this this whole thing y equals a times uh, square root of b times uh, x minus c escape escape plus d and then I'm going to get sliders for each of these so uh, I, I'm going to minimize a and b almost get them to cancel out by keep keeping them, them at one but look at c as I move c to the right remember it's a minus c in my function so it, so x's are behaving inversely if I put negatives in I'm now going to have a plus C, it's moving left. If I put positives in, I, I have a negative C, I'm moving right. And then the D is direct. If I move up, it moves up. If I move left, it moves down. Right? So very, very directly. But I can still see the original function. But then what do I start to do with it? Well, I could start to, exp I could start to raise it up in the A direction. So I'm pulling it up in the Y direction by making A larger than 1. Right? If I, of course, if I make a negative, it's now down. But again, I'm pulling it down. Again, I'm, I'm uh, stretching it right in that y direction. And then same thing with b. I, uh, if you can see, I'm making b larger, but the graph is crushing. Right? It's it's being compressed. And then if I make b small, it will widen. It will stretch. So, so it's a nice thing for you to do whenever you have one of these, these uh, transformations to be able to build it on Desmos. Now, what's really interesting, and, you know, it's interesting just because I'm a nerd, but when you go to calculus, I want you to be thinking about what does one of these shifts do to my graph, and in the same sense, what does it do to the tangent line or secant line, right? So if I'm if I'm looking at right if I'm looking at uh, square root of x minus two or just the square root of x, and I think about my, myself standing on this hill skiing, right? And I got music on. Right? If I'm skiing on this hill, and they move my whole hill over, will my skis change slope? If they take the hill and just move it over, the skis aren't going to change their slope. So, so uh, we have to be thinking about when we're doing calculus, when we're doing derivatives, when we're finding secant slopes and then letting h go to zero to find tangent slopes, when we find these derivatives, they're not going to be affected by horizontal or vertical shifts. If I shift my whole hill up, right? So one, two. If I shift my whole hill up, my ski slopes, my skis are still going to be at the same slope. So my derivatives aren't going to change. If I take derivatives, if I take functions and sh and shift them over, left, right, up, down, my derivatives won't change. Okay, my derivatives won't change. And so what I'm saying is, if f of x is x squared. We got uh, our difference quotient was 2x plus h. And if I let h go 0, if I let the limit as h goes to 0 of my difference quotient, I get just 2x, and this is my derivative. So now I know if the function is x squared, I know the derivative f prime is 2x. And so if I have a function of x like x minus 3 squared, guess what? My derivative is now... 2 times x minus 3. So, meaning if I have a shift in my function, I'll have the same shift in my derivative. Horizontal, that works that way. Horizontal shifts. If I shift my function horizontally, the derivative is going to shift horizontally. It's going to save you a lot of time when you're doing some of these deriv derivatives in, in Calc 1. Okay, one last thing and then we're quit. And I'm trying to quit early. 
I promised the other class I'd quit early, and I, I quit at like one minute before the class, and they all booed. So I'm trying to give you a little more time than them. <laughs> um, you're asking less questions than they are. So I'm assuming you're just better than them? Yes. Is that fair? Should I just assume that? You're just the, the stronger group? <laughs> uh, we'll see after the test. Okay, we'll we'll, see okay you, that's fair. Let's wait Let's wait for the test. <laughs> this test will be so easy. I, I, I mean, you still have to study, okay? But it should be very easy. All right, last thing. I want to be able to show that polynomials quadratics are, are simply transformations of, of the quadratic x squared. I want to show that if I if you give me any quadratic, it's a transformation of the mother function x squared. And I'm going to do that by completing the square. Okay, so this is our last topic today. Um, uh, if f of x is x squared, this is a mother then the daughter g of x uh, is going to be some a times x minus x sub v quantity squared plus y sub v, right? Uh, is, so if f of x equals x squared is, is the mother, g of x, written in this form, is a, a, a daughter. Uh, where... Um, the vertex is x sub v comma y sub v. So our process for doing this is called completing the square. I'm going to teach you completing the squares if you've never learned it before. Okay? Just so everybody will be on the same page. So, but you can clearly see I, I've just taken my x squared curve and moved it somewhere. So it's still, so I'm still thinking about and, right, and if I expand this thing out, right, if I expand this out, I'm going to get some ax squared plus bx plus c, right? And so you, you can still see the mother function there. What's the thing in charge there is still the x squared, right? That's the, the most powerful piece there. So um, let's just jump to a homework question. Close my window. So I, I'm not going to formally write down the step-by-step -step for completing the square. I'll say it a couple of times today. Um, but um, uh, I can do that Monday if you want me to. You're going to see in Chapter 3 we're going to be completing the square as well. So um, um, so this thing is going to keep happening. And it's going to happen again in Calc 1. It's going to happen again in Calc 2. Um, so we want to be able to do it quickly. So let's start first with a nice simple quadratic um, x squared minus 6x plus 4. So complete the square and then show that this is just a shift, right? That's what it's asking me to do. So this is homework 12. Uh, I think it's number, number 6. So I've got f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 4. I want to write this in vertex form or you, uh, show that it's a, a shift of x squared using complete the square. Okay? So, so what I do is 
I factor out the leading coefficient from the first two terms. So from the x squared term and the x term. And I leave the constant term alone. If I my leading term is 1, then it's very simple. Nothing to do. Uh, if it's negative 1, it's very simple. We're going to do one with with a with a, a non-leading co coefficient of 1 in a, in a minute. So I would call this guy uh, B, right? AX squared plus BX plus C. I call this guy K. So the new coefficient that I get in here is K. And I, my joke is that if you see K, you'll be fine with this. If you, if you can't see K, you, you'll be if you see K'd. <laughs> so I want to find K, which is negative 6, the coefficient of X. Get half of it. So half of K is half of negative 6, which is negative 3. I'm going to be using half of K every time when I do this problem. And then I want to find half of K quantity squared. So that, of course, is 9. Step one, factor out the leading coefficient from the x squared and the x term. Step two, find k. Step three, find half of k. Step four, find half of k quantity squared. Add it on the inside and subtract it on the outside. So I'm adding my uh, value of 9 on the inside, and I'm subtracting it on the outside. I, I, I can't just add something to the function and keep it the same, so I have to add it and subtract it. Next step, that set of parens I've created is a perfect square. This is why it's called completing the square. It's always x plus half of k quantity squared, and you can always double check that by foiling it out. And then I've got my, I've got my uh, f of x uh, turned into vertex form. And I can see the vertex is always coming from positive 3, negative 5. Because x's behave inversely. x's are reverse in the middle, inside. And y's are direct. So that, that negative 3 is inside. That's why I take a positive 3. The negative 5 is outside. That's why I keep it as a negative 5. And so now what do I have here? Very simple. I have my original uh, 1 by 1 box for x squared. Right? that original one by one box for x squared. And where did I move this thing to? I moved it three to the right, one, two, three to the right, and then five down. Ugh, you know what I mean though. So there's my new my new function is down there. That's that's how simple it is. Once once you if you can use that box idea, it's very simple to do these. Again, one of my steps, I didn't write them down. You could write them down. Factor out the leading coefficient from the x squared and the x. Find the k, half of k, half of k quantity squared. Add it on the inside, subtract it on the outside. Factor, put it into vertex form. And you can kind of see, uh, I can say g of x is f of x minus 3 all minus 5, right? Remember what the f function was, was the x squared function. So, so that f function is square, whatever is inside. So x minus 3 quantity squared minus 5. So you can see it's just a, a transformation, a shift to the right and a shift to down, right? Shift 3 to the right, shift 5 down. That, that completing the square panicking in anyone? Okay, let's do another one. That's good. I like that. No one's, no one's panicking. I love it. That was number 6. Let's see, number 7. 2x squared minus 12x plus 22. So it's hard to tell about a shift left, right, or up, but I can see at least a, a, a stretch. 
right? I can see I'm doing 2 times x squared. So I'm definitely going to see a stretch of this. It's going to be a taller, smiley face, right? That's official language when I say smiley face. Now, when you graph these, it's, it's going to be pretty easy to graph this. I'm going to move my, so if I think about my, my, my vertex is going to move to here. And then I'm going to be able to figure out where the other point is based on this rectangle. So I already know if I have a 2x squared plus yada, 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 I'm going to take this thing, move it somewhere and stretch it, right? So I'm going to stretch that vertex out double, right? So since I'm multiplying by 2 on the outside, right, I already know that my box is going to be double height. So I'll grab this one once we, once we get it done. This is our last problem today. No need to cheer, even though I am cheering inside. So f of x equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 22. I think it could be a shift right and up. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, I don't know. I think it's maybe right and down. So, but I want to complete the square. So I want to factor out a 2 from the x squared and the 12x. Right? And after I do that, I double check. Okay, 2x squared, check. 2 times negative 6, negative 12, check. Plus 22, check. It's still the same. I find, I find k. It's a coincidence that it's the same value. Half of it is what? Negative 3. And when I square that, I get positive 9. So I'm going to add 9 on the inside, and I'm going to subtract 18 on the outside. Do you see why? I'm going to add 9 on the inside. That was half, my half of k quantity squared. But remember, I factored out a 2 from, the, from that piece. So I have to distribute that 2 back before I cancel it. So I added the 9 inside, brought, brought the 2 back in, multiplying, and then I have to figure out what I have to subtract on the outside to keep equality. And again, I'm double checking myself. Got the 2x squared, done. I got the 12x, done. I got an 18 and a minus 18 and a positive 22, done. Right? So I've got to double check that everything I'm doing is not creating some kind of inequality. I've got to keep equality. So I'm adding at half of k quantity squared inside and then making sure I cancel it on the outside. This first piece now factors into x plus half of k quantity squared every single time. I don't have to think about it, but of course if you want to, you can, and then plus 4. So there's my, new, there's my transformation, and I can see that I'm going to have a vertex at 3 comma 4, but I'm going to have a height of 2 on that box, right? So I want to make sure that I, I can see that I'm stretching it out in the y direction because of that leading 2. Now, when I go to graph it, it takes a little bit of patience here when you're first learning this. So first of all, I've got this, right? This was a 2. This was a, what? Uh, half of k, right? So 3. And I forgot what, what I had here. Somebody help me. Remind me. 4. Thank you. So I, I put my answer in and, and make sure it is correct. It is. And then I want to graph this, right? So graph this using the function tool. Now look at what kind of tools it gives me. It, it, it says I can put on a parabola Right? And I think that's going to be enough for me, because I know my vertex is at 3. x is 3, y is 4. Oops, can I move it? No. Oh, here it is. Oh, that's stupid. Uh, vertical shift or, or stretch is 2, right? Will it let me do it? Yes. Um, what else can it let me do? Why can't I move it? Damn it. Click on a point or oh, point to select. I'm trying to move it here. 3, 4. 
I don't know. You're going to have to figure it out and then let me know. <laughs> let me see what else I have in tools here. What I really want is a point. I want to plot two points and then graph my parabola that way. Let me see if I can do one more time. If I click on the graph, I click on the vertex, right, plot my curve. I know where I want it to be. I want it to be at 3, 4. It's not letting me do that. Oh, here it is. Vertical shift up 4. Oh, there we go. Horizontal shift over 3. Vertical stretch in the y direction 2. There it is. Ugh, that's horrible. Stupid way. But I can't I can't control the the software. Right? We gotta deal with what we got. Okay, that's it for today. What do you think? Well we got out of class early. <laughs> we did we did we? Nope. Damn it. I try I tried. I swear I tried. <laughs> Sorry about that. Boom. Thank you, Professor. You got it. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. You too. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Professor. Practice, practice.